exactly inspiring rhetoric? No, well, poor, poor Jim Clapper kind of got thrown under the bus with that one uh, on the president. It really is uh, blaming the intelligence, and he very well might be right, but I think he needs to take a little bit of a buck stops here that I, I goofed up on the intelligence. I think that's what he wanted to say, but he kind of hedged it a little bit there. Because we went back, CNN went back and looked at the administration officials over and publicly, like, at least over a year they have been warning the president about the danger of ISIS. They've been telling the American public about it. Well, I remember when James Carney did a whole uh, real spiel um, about uh, worrying about ISIS. And I think the president had his, if you'd like, uh, uh, mission accomplished moment. Remember the banner with mm -hmm. George W. Bush? I think when he did that New Yorker article and called ISIS the JV, um, that's going to haunt him. That's a, a little... A, he a, said he wasn't talking about... This, he, this is what he said. He, I, he, he said, I wasn't talking about ISIS specifically, but groups like, like I ISIS. <laughs> but still, ISIS is under that umbrella. Yeah, it's going to live. It's not as bad as a visual of a mission accomplished banner, but nevertheless, you know, ISIS is not the JV. We're ratcheting up for, for war in, I, in Syria. Can I ask you, did he throw the intelligence community under the bus? Because he said... I didn't do it. The buck stops with me, but that's not what I meant. But well, I mean, we're really just basically saying a bunch of a faulty intelligence guys on really big issues, and where's the solution? Where's the, when's the good intelligence coming? Mm -hmm. Are we still relying on faulty intelligence? Um, you know, ISIS has done a number on us. The, the psychological damage that the American people and the world has suffered by those beheadings, we're now all like wanting um, to get into action, and the president's trying to calm the waters a little bit. He may have to call Congress in session and have a, um, a vote but on I'm, whether we can. I'm war. curious about that. Given that people are so afraid of ISIS and that you think the president should calm the waters, do you think that there's a need for sort of presidential rhetoric? that talks about this existential threat and talks about what America means. I mean, maybe I've been watching too much mm -hmm. of the Roosevelt's on PBS, but that sort of presidential speech about we will survive this, we are better than this. Have you heard that kind of speech? Uh, I think instead of going on 60 Minutes, the president needs to do prime time address. Uh, I know that's a little old fashioned, but it still breaks through, let the networks cover it and explain what's going on. Look, we're in a political season. I understand that, that they're, they're, the Republicans may be playing some politics with beating up on President Obama to do more in Syria. And, and, uh, but we're dealing with a lot of semantics. What, is, what are boots on the ground? What is war? Is it a limited war? Are drones part of a war? And I don't think we have enough clarity. And I think that's the job of the president to do it. We had containment in the Cold War, and it had different phases. George Kennan's containment and then Paul Nitz's containment strategy. We need a containment strategy plus on Syria that needs to be really articulated to the American